Welcome to Declassifying the Paranormal. Here we reveal the secrets that sinister organizations attempt to conceal from the world, objects and entities that could shake the very foundations of what we think is, and is not, possible. Today we have secured documents belonging to the SCP Foundation, and will reveal to you the nature of SCP-6027. Item Number SCP-6027 Object Class Safe Special Containment Procedures SCP-6027 is confined to Site-83's Communal Refrigeration Unit and thus does not require further containment. Consumption of SCP-6027 is strictly forbidden. SCP-6027 is currently under the purview of Dr. Matthew Corbett of the Culinary Research Department and as such, requires written and signed permission by him prior to any and all testing. Description SCP-6027 is the collective designation given to a collection of various foodstuffs located within the Site-83 Communal Refrigeration Unit, distinguished by a faint pattern of digestimantic definition of or relating to the manipulation of the ontokinetic properties of edible materials, sigils inscribed on the Tupperware containing them. Failure to disengage these sigils prior to consuming SCP-6027 will result in an instantaneous bowel movement from the subject, often resulting in the violent release of noxious gases or gastroenteritis. As SCP-6027 activates its anomalous effects when coming into contact with the calcium of the teeth and saliva in the mouth, there are no known ways to prevent its adverse anomalous properties. Written on a note attached to SCP-6027 is the phrase, Mats. Don't fucking touch, Kane. SCP-6027-1 is a cephalopod-esque entity with innumerable prehensile adhesive appendages that manifest from the consumer's posterior. SCP-6027-1 uses its appendages to collect all expelled biological waste from the subject, reintegrating it with the subject's body. The previously expelled material will then be restructured to resemble the missing portion of SCP-6027 in the throat before being orally expelled by the subject. The restructured material, SCP-6027-2, will then relocate to SCP-6027 and restore it to its previous physical form as if no alterations were made. SCP-6027-1 only manifests following the consumption of SCP-6027. Discovery SCP-6027 was discovered on October 7, 2021 by Dr. Corbett, although junior researcher Elijah Kane was the first to experience its anomalous effects. Kane had recently been employed at the Foundation due to his remarkable work studying the occult at Miskatonic University and was assigned to Site 83's Culinary Research Department to assist in the study of anomalous food items. However, during his allotted 30-minute break period, Kane reported feeling substantial hunger and confessed to eating SCP-6027, as he had forgotten to bring a lunch with him. When confronted by Dr. Corbett, Kane denied interacting with the entity. The following footage was recovered from Site 83's break room later that same evening. Time, 1500. Location, Site 83 break room A. Begin log. 1500, Corbett enters break room, looking at all current occupants. He opens the refrigerator and places SCP-6027 inside. 1501, Corbett inscribes digestimantic sigils onto SCP-6027 and writes the aforementioned phrase on a piece of adhesive paper. Corbett closes the refrigerator, walks to a nearby table, and sits. He begins reading on a mobile device, occasionally glancing at the refrigerator. 1509, Kane enters. Corbett exits. The two exchange a brief greeting as they pass each other. 1510, Corbett appears to turn down the hall, however, part of his face can be seen from behind the exit to the break room. Kane looks over his shoulder in Corbett's direction, but does not appear to notice him. 1513, Kane extracts SCP-6027 and bites into it. Seconds later he clutches his abdomen, apparently in intense pain. 1515, 
Current occupants begin to take notice of Kane as he leans against the refrigerator. Then approach. Moments later, Kane's pants burst. Biological material is expelled with an explosive trajectory. The material spreads, covering the majority of the break room, the occupants, and the food therein. Several scream. Corbett can be seen laughing as he was shielded from the blast by the wall. 1516 SCP-6027-1 manifests. Kane screams and attempts to contain the entity with his bare hands. He is hoisted by his posterior and suspended approximately 2 meters in the air by SCP-6027-1 as it begins to collect the expelled material. SCP-6027-1 rolls the collected material into a loose sphere shape before beginning to retreat within Kane. 1517 – Several of the current occupants vomit, others exit. 1519, SCP-6027-1 has completely penetrated Kane's body. Shortly thereafter, Kane orally expels SCP-6027-2, which proceeds to levitate toward SCP-6027 and seamlessly integrate with it. Corbett enters the room and places his hand on Kane's shoulder. Corbett says something inaudible and points at the refrigerator. Kane flees. End log. Afterward, when questioned about what was said between him and junior researcher Kane, Corbett admitted that he inquired if Kane had read the note he left on SCP-6027. To date, there have been no further instances of SCP-6027 manifestation. Junior researcher Kane requested transport to another site following the incident. His request was approved. Thank you for tuning in. We hope that you enjoyed this broadcast. If you did please subscribe, like and share it around. If you have any particular case files you'd like us to cover in future broadcasts leave a comment below and we'll get around to it shortly. Tune in again tomorrow for more revelations.